Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Anthony Marchese. How are you today, Anthony? Fine, how are you? Thanks, Tracy. I'm very good, and I'll tell you, I'm dying to ask you, how the heck did you secure Eric Neurez for your board of directors? Well, through a lot of hard work, perseverance, and most importantly, uh, Eric coming to the realization that we are, in my opinion, the he premier heavy rare earth project, not only in North America, but in the world. Well, I know the Investor Intel audience has been debating this thoroughly, and of course I loved Christopher Ecclestone's piece on the ant and the grasshopper featuring you. You're certainly garnering a lot of attention from analysts right now because of your recent progress on your metallurgy. Talk to us about this. Well, this is the first time we've been able to publicly say anything about our metallurgy because of the prohibition relative to our rights offering that we just concluded uh, yesterday. Um, we have made significant progress rather, in our metallurgy because we've been able to finally show the world uh, the most difficult part of processing, which is we have proven that we can take hard rock, leach it, and take out most of the impurities to the point now where we are ready to uh, separate by element and uh, separate by class. And of course, this is a very critical point, which we're, you know, in a very difficult topic of critical materials, and that's about economics. So you've also been able to clarify the economic advantage of Texas Rare Earths. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? One of the uh, criticisms that we've heard in the past regarding Texas Rare Earth is the fact that we have a very low grade. Well, it may be a surprise to people that, in fact, the Chinese clay deposits of which m most of the world or all of the world's rare earths come from actually are at a grade equal to a lower than that of Texas rare earth resources. Nobody doubts the Chinese ability. Why? Because it's all about net profit. It's not about revenue. It's not about expense. It's about can you process at a cost less than you could sell it. And that's what Texas rare earth resources economics are all about. We uh, outline that in our PEA, and if anything, the numbers from the PEA uh, relative to our recent metallurgy have gotten even better. All right, so we have some economic advantages, and of course we have political advantages, and while I touched on Eric Neurez joining your board because, um, you know, I've been, I've enjoyed working with uh, Mr. Neurez over the years, he's joined a substantial board of directors and management team that you've already put together. Can you just remind our audience of what you've already put together and are building on? Well, in addition to Eric, who, as I said earlier, uh, just a knowledgeable individual and a very nice individual, more importantly, uh, we also have Jack Lifton, who is a contributor and writer to your site, uh, extremely knowledgeable. Jim Wolf, who comes from the rare earth industry. Nick Pingitori, who is a professor at the University of Texas, El Paso, and actually the architect, if you will, of the uh, process or the ability of Texas Rare Earth to actually heat bleach because no one in the world has seen a hard rock deposit uh, able to be heat bleached like ours. So those are among the many. And obviously uh, uh, Dan Gorski, who is our CEO, board member, and uh, absolutely indispensable and extremely knowledgeable. And of course you have a very politically uh, savvy advisory board with members like Daniel McGrory. And so because of that, um, I'd like to ask you a political question. Uh, we've had a lot of news recently about the F-35s in China. I'd love your opinion on this. Do you mind commenting? Absolutely. It's uh, easy to see, uh, and Reuters originally uh, broke the story about a year ago, it's easy to see how the Chinese, uh, if in fact they were able to, it would be easy to see how the Chinese are able to uh, gather secrets from the F-35 when they manufacture 100% of the world's heavy rare earth resources, which coincidentally go into the F-35 and every other major weapons platform that the military has. So, uh, not surprising, uh, you know, to see the relationship uh, which exists between the defense contractors and the Chinese producers. 
Okay, and of course, with right now, you know, Ecclestone identified that you have numerous independent resources that are mineable at Texas Rare Earths, and he included, in addition to the rare earths, the fluorite, beryllium, lithium, and uranium. Can you talk to us about this? Well, thank you. Um, first of all, we get zero credit for any of the byproducts which you just mentioned. Uh, let's talk about uranium. We have a uh, measured, indicated, and inferred uranium resource. At our PEA uh, level of production, we would be producing, producing excuse me, anywhere from 250,000 to 300,000 pounds a year of uranium. With our scale-back version of our PEA, we're probably at about 100,000. Uh, you figure out the math. Today, uh, spot price of uranium, 38 to $40 uh, a pound. That's uranium. In addition, we have lithium. Um, we would be probably, uh, if not the largest, among the largest lithium producers in the United States. Uh, at full scale, we'd be producing about 9,000 tons a year of lithium carbonate equivalent. Current market price, six, seven thousand dollars a ton. So you can see, you can again do the math. Uh, that's at full full scale. Uh, reduced scale we're at approximately $3,000 a ton. So again, we get zero credit for lithium. I, I see you know, on your uh, website lots of lithium and, and uranium stories. I never see Texas Fair Earth mentioned. Uh, I think people just overlook us. Well, Anthony, now that we have Chris Berry on our team, I'm sure you're going to be covered in the lithium section, and I've got to make a phone call to him today, so I will remind him to put Texas Rare Earth resources on his radar. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Anthony. It was great to get, up, uh, to get updated. Great, thank you.